Hello, Grisha. How are you? Hello, Beril. I am fine. Thank you. You? I'm fine too. Thank you for asking. So, as you know, today we will talk about blended learning and some digital tools for feedback. Yeah. So, first of all, I want to explain what is blended learning briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, you can guess from the name, we blend and combine the traditional classroom, the traditional face-to-face -face environment with the e-learning technologies, such as, such mm -hmm. as um, online lectures. So the computer-based learning and face-to-face -face interaction come together, which is a great opportunity for learners uh, who have different learning styles, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, in the classroom, they can do face-to-face -face activities with open-ended uh, open questions, mm -hmm. while outside of the classroom, they can watch a video, do individual study online, uh, video lectures uh, with the use of uh, new media. Mm -hmm. uh, so, first of all, let's understand what, uh, what is the role of the teacher in here. So I want to ask you, what are the role, roles of the teacher? Actually, I want to say that um, firstly, as you know, blended um, learning um, mixes uh, traditional and face-to-face -face education with technology. And uh, people can think that uh, blended um, teach, blended learning and teaching roles is kind of um not active but it is active actually and there are some kind of uh, roles uh, teacher uh, traditionally classroom instruction has um largely teacher directed um and a bit the bit of differentiation uh thrown in but it's blended learning and it now becomes um, more student driven bottom up and customized actually. And with uh, different, um, uh, with differentiation as main feature, uh, as main feature and much of this new learning dynamic is due to the enhanced role technology plays in instruction actually. And also this new learning dynamic uh, benefits students and teachers alike and even students permission and space to uh, space to become active learner and who gain knowledge directly lets them assume some control over their uh, learning and helps them develop self-reliance, self-estimate uh, and self-confidence actually. So yeah, basically the teacher should be the facilitator, not the dominant character in here because it is a student center method. They mm -hmm. need to be flexible and motivators. And mm -hmm. also they need to have a better technological skills since mm -hmm. uh, they should be able to know which tools could be best for their learners' needs and how to implement them effect effectively. Mm -hmm. And I also want to ask you that, what are the positive sides? What are the beneficial sides of the blended learning? As you know, um, blended, blended teacher um, kind of means uh, with the technology blended uh, as a part of. So that uh, I can say uh, one feature is easy to access and flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, students and teachers by having uh, resources online and students can access material with no constraints and including schedule conflicts. And online materials can be found on smartphone, tablets, laptops and <laughs> desk desktops, uh, which is technology we are all already using and daily using actually. And we can add another feature of um, positive effects of blended education and increased satisfaction and effectiveness, actually. <clears throat> As you know, uh, students today prefer, uh, prefer 
um, to have a variety of ways of to learn as digital natives, many young students are familiar with an online environment actually, and uh, they prefer it. Um, they prefer it and also the varied formats of education also serve a perform, uh, purpose of outside and student entertainment and satisfaction. It also may be a more effective way for students to learn because they don't get bored uh, the topics or they can understand the topics more easier way to visual or video types or kinds. Yeah, I think it's because of the interactive visuals and yes, those, and those kind of contents because yes. uh, the teacher not using only the written material such as textbook. This is why uh, mm -hmm. it would be more intriguing for the learners actually. Mm -hmm. and I, I agree with you all, all the things you said. And also I want to add some challenges about blended learning because there, there are also some challenges like uh, teachers should be careful about deciding which technological tools should they use because um, not all of the tools are uh, not, not all of the tools are easy to use and also they need to be selective mm -hmm. about this issue because it may be harder harder to find reliable resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, blended learning requires higher technological skills uh, to use the materials effectively. So this is why teachers also should be uh, should develop themselves in terms of the use of technology itself mm -hmm. uh, up to a level. And mm -hmm. also it may cause overwork if you are not experienced to design a well-structured classroom. Uh, so yeah, this, this may be the challenges in here. So as you know, uh, feedback is one of the most crucial things in learning process and especially language learning process, because generally it supports mm -hmm. the learners uh, for their motivation, for their confidence, self-awareness and such things. So. In this situation, it has a great importance in blended learning as well. So we read about some useful digital, mm -hmm. digital tools about giving feedback. I want to ask you that, which digital tools did you find useful for yourself in terms of giving feedback? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, digital way is a kind of um, complicated for all of us because we don't um, accuse, accustom it and uh, we have read about uh, digital, uh, digital uh, tools for giving feedbacks and one tool is really um, seems to me useful it's Novio actually it's a kind of uh, reading shape and Novia um, helps to you uh, create an environment to um, giving a feedbacks with the help of with help of the um, video actually and it's create a presentation of feedback and play the presentation and the use the camera to add your own video to feedback to students. Mm -hmm. So your learners have the chance to see the online ed edition of their work being corrected while they can um, watch their teachers talking about at the same time. Um, it, Noia is kind of, it's, uh, good for me and I can uh, use it in the future for my students. Uh, what do you think? What's your uh, best application for giving feedbacks to your students? Thank you for your answer, by the way. Uh, I found Audio City interesting. It's for mm -hmm. learners listening skills with audio feedback. Uh, so it says that for a writing assignment, for example, the teacher can give learners 
and all the feedback before uh, learners learners create their final written work. So at this point, I think it may be more motivated for some students to hear or listen to their teacher instead of only uh, reading his or her comments, I think. And also, mm -hmm. uh, generally, there are different tools like Quick Time Player and Jing for the video feedback. Uh, and, uh, and also, we can use Microsoft Office to give feedback, and mm -hmm. it is also good for error correction. And actually, it is easy yeah. to use. I mean, Microsoft mm -hmm. or Gmail or some kind of things. So yeah, uh, there were lots of beneficial, useful, and different tools we can use while giving a feedback. And, mm -hmm. and I also want to ask you that, what do you think about why should we use this kind of digital tools while giving a feedback? I mean, actually, uh, at the same time, we have to do that. We, uh, we have to use that because, uh, as you know, there is a pandemic in uh, our world and we have to access our students some way and we have to. Um, warn uh, them about their education life and um, we have to show them the same, uh, show them the right way actually so that we have to use kind of feedback tools uh, to encourage them to fix their um, errors, mistakes and we have to actually we um, <laughs> don't shoot we don't have to shoot we yeah don't, it's right uh, up, kind of obligatory for us uh, uh, but um feedbacks kind of uh, uh, personal ones it's a really good one uh, good one uh, because um every feedbacks feedbacks don't uh, fix or don't suit uh, to uh, uh, anyone because uh, mistakes and uh, errors, personal things. So that, um, in my opinion, um, giving feedbacks by personal is really important. And uh, what do you think about it? Uh, actually, actually, we have three more uh, minutes. Yeah. Can talk. Yeah. Actually, I think that we should use them because first of all they are more practical instead of yes. writing to every student on a paper they are more practical and it is more faster to do faster to give feedbacks with the help of those kind of digital tools and um, with the help of them um, also you will have different alternatives to give feedback, feedbacks with diverse platforms and tools. So mm -hmm. in this point, you can actually think about the, your learner's uh, characteristics as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And what kind of thing he or she is prefers. Mm -hmm. those kind of things. So with these different interesting tools, you may actually engage your students, your learners, at a, at a cognitive level as well. Because I think receiving those kind of feedbacks from those kind of platforms, they are more interesting and they are more motivated for me. I mean, think about you are uh, hearing and you are seeing, watching your teacher about talking, talking about your work or something rather than uh, reading his or her comments. I think it's, it's mm -hmm. better. <laughs> Yes, it's better for me too. And so, yeah, generally blended learning, yeah, it has some challenges, of course, but generally it is more beneficial for me because it's increased learner engagement and uh, in a collaborative environment, etc. And we can uh, use these kind of digital tools in our blended learning environment as well. So thank you for discussing with me about these topics. 
If you don't want to add something else, I will stop the recording right now. Okay, thank you so much, Beryl. Thank you too. <laughs> See you later. See you.